Hi there, this is Phil Legator from Pusher. Um, I've just created a sample project that demonstrates how to use Pusher with PhoneGap and Android. And we've had a few support requests about this. Some people have, have done it, no problem. We do have an FAQ on it, um, but it just provides some basic details. So this is now a starter project that should make um, getting up and running um, much easier. So this is the project github.com slash pusher slash push it hyphen phone gap hyphen android so you can clone this project you'll see if I've done a test run here um, okay let's clone so you'll also need the android SDK and the phone gap SDK um, that's all mentioned um, it's all mentioned within the readme so, if we now open Eclipse, and what we're going to do now is, is import the project that we've just pulled from GitHub into a workspace. Um, we may get some errors. We'll see. Um, any The information on, on the errors that you kind of get are, generally are based on the location of the Android SDK or the phone gap SDK, although the phone gap jar, uh, the Cordova jar is actually included in the, um, the project already. So if I import an existing project, go over here. There we go, push your phone gap Android, I import that. Okay, let's give it a minute to to build, so it's loading data for the Android 4.1 um, and uh, runtime, so that's good target runtime. So if I look at project properties and go into Android, you'll see here 4.1 selected, which is great. Um, that's one of the problems that I've seen in the past when you pull this down fresh that it might not select that. We'll see build paths, we've got called over jar, which, which is already included within, within the libs directory. Um, and again, that Android 4.1. So if we have a look at the source, there's a, uh, a WebSocket wrapper, which, which exposes a, a WebSocket object to the JavaScript layer via Java. So because Android, um, internet browser with the standard web view at the minute doesn't support WebSockets. We need to make that work in some way. Now we could use flash fallback, but that's not as reliable because the device might not have flash installed. So by adding this WebSocket wrapper, it means that you can guarantee that the that WebSockets will be available to the web view. So there's a wrapper, there's more information in the um, readme. So if I just look at the, the basic implement, the basic um, application, we're extending from Droid Gap on create, we're loading index.html, and we're also exposing a WebSocket factory. Now that's used from another library, a JavaScript library, which creates this wrapper for us. So if you go into this WebSocket file here, you'll see this creates a WebSocket object, um, which means that when the Pusher JavaScript library loads, that a WebSocket object, object is available. It won't try and fall back to Flash, and it will use this bridge between JavaScript and PhoneGap wrapper. So we can have a look in index.html. You'll see that we include the Cordova JavaScript library, the PhoneGap library. We include this WebSocket wrapper, include the Pusher JavaScript library, jQuery for help, and app.js. Now in app.js, um, we're using jQuery to, to load, but then we also wait to to see when the um, when the device is ready, when the device is ready, we grab some information about the device and put it to the output it to the screen. We also connect to Pusher. We bind to state change events on the connection, and we display them in in the UI, the view. I'll show you that in a minute. And we subscribe to a my channel uh, channel, and we bind to the subscription succeed the event and display that. So in the view. You'll see here we've got two placeholders for connection status to be updated and subscription status. So if we, so hopefully that covers the the basics of this. 
Um, what we can do now is if I click, if I just click run actually, um, what's interesting now is switch over to the debug mode um, and look at log cap. You'll see that the, the application's running there. Now it's going to ask us which um, Android emulator we want to launch. Now, if you choose a 2.3, then um, you're gonna see a crash. Now the problem there is that with the emulator, only with the emulator, there's a bug that means that the JavaScript to Java bridge doesn't work properly and can crash within the emulator. So you're best for development using a 2.2 or um, a four version of the emulator to, to run this. So this will kick off the emulator. Now this can take a little while to load. So if the time jumps, I may, cut this a little bit of this load time out um, because it does take a while. If we go over here, what we're doing is we're waiting for the, the emulator to launch and then it'll install the, the APK, the application. Uh, one thing to point out here as we wait is that I found the emulator to be a little bit temperamental. Sometimes you'll launch them and it doesn't seem to um, kind of attach to them properly. So when you, um, if you try and rerun the application, it will create another instance of the emulator. Now that's not ideal. Um, but eventually, once you get one up and running, it, it, it generally kind of works okay. So I'm going to pause things now and I'm going to start again when it's actually loaded. Okay, so the Android device is again that is loaded up. See down here it says it's installing the pusher phone gap PPK. Now if I click and drag to unlock, we'll see that own page. And what we've seen in the background here, um, it's starting the the emulator. Okay, yes, I do want to come to log cat. And this is this is useful. So Logcat is kind of where you find out all the information. If you're a phone gap developer, you'll know about this sort of stuff already. Um, so there we go. Um, there's all sorts of information in here in terms of um, connecting, subscribing. So if we go back here, you'll see that we do have the device information and we also are connected and the subscription has succeeded. So what we'll do is if I jump back into the normal Java perspective, and I let me first create a um, create a label and just say and info. What I'm going to do is I'm going to output some event information into that, unsurprisingly. So I'll bind to a my event on the channel. And call a handle event function. And what we'll do is we'll just um, output the information to that. And I'll just show the information in JSON so we can see what comes through. Okay. So if I relaunch this, yep, we want to use the existing one, which is great. So this is where, because the emulator's up and running already, you kind of tend to see things speeding up a little bit. Let's just check the view. Okay, we've definitely got that now. We're installing the, the new version of, of the library. So you'll see here it's it's disappeared 
that this is the new version launching. There we go. Um, so we're just waiting for event info. Right, so now what we need to do is if we jump into the pusher dashboard, we can go to the event creator. Um, and we know here that we're subscribing to a channel called My Channel. And we know the event we're binding to is My Event. And we'll just send some big data. So what I'll do is I'll shift that over here and I'll get this emulator here. And then if I click send event, the event was sent successfully. And if we look in here, okay, so if we look in here, the JSON object doesn't have a string phi. No, it doesn't. It has a You're probably shouting at me when I was typing this. It has a string if I event. Oh, sorry, uh, method. So again, if we relaunch that, okay. So over here, that the old one's been. And killed and the new one's launching. So, right here we're starting to we've connected um, and we've subscribed. So, we're waiting for event info. So, if I jump over to the event creator again, and I can do send event. We get hello world. So that shows that we're connecting, subscribing, and receiving event information in PhoneCap. So as I said, this project is available in GitHub. So you'll be able to get started with PhoneCap and Android in 10 minutes, let's say, if you, the emulators uh, don't play it too much. Okay, I'm so Phil Legator at Legator on Twitter, or you can email me, Phil at pusher.com